Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a really nice effect in Visual Shader VFX Graph. So I'm going to make a floor, so you see the character here running around. And um, yeah, if you look into this one, first, third perspective, you see there's a floor popping up. And... Um, <clears throat> And here you can see it as well, and there are some parameters you can change how big you want this area to be. So let's say you want to run to the other side. Or, uh, yeah, of course, smaller, I think it's better. So then you have this one here. Really cool. So I'm going to make this small cube in Houdini. It's going to be really quick, and I'm going to set up everything in the first tutorial. So actually, first in the second tutorial, I'm going to show how I do it in the VFX graph. So if you're more into just the VFX part, just check the next one. Otherwise, I'm going to set everything up now with um, doing the input with a player into the VFX graph and so forth. So I'm going to start in a... Whoops. So no, I restarted Unity and I can just say whenever in in this specific Unity version like Unity, this version here, you can see on the top when I have this one locked or an inspector locked like this and I do play and not play, it always crashes or very often. So if it happens to you, maybe you should make sure you never lock any inspectors when you play and exit play. So let's get started doing this shit. First off, <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> First off, we're gonna go and go into an empty scene. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure we have the scene up and running as we want. So first off, <clears throat> I'm gonna make a cube, and I'm gonna have this cube twenty by five by five like this and I'm gonna um, let's see here I'm actually gonna pull it down 2.5 negative 2.5 units so it's on the uh, floor you see here and then I'm also gonna do it um, 12.5 in this direction <clears throat> And the reason I do that is because I'm going to lower this ground a bit. And I'm going to have this um, plane also going to be in the center. And this one going to be, this is actually 20 by 20 units, this square here. So that's why I want this one over here. And I'm going to have the other one over here. And that one gonna be, let's see, this one is, um, I'm gonna call this edge, uh, said positive. And this is gonna be edge, said negative. <clears throat> so it's gonna be like negative 12.5. So now we have this um, plane here in the middle. And this plane, gonna have the mesh collider. I'm going to remove the mesh renderer because our player is going to run on top of this one. So, and also I want the player. So I'm going to go in the sample, third person and drag in the, this uh, level. And I'm just going to take the player, player, main camera into this scene, the current scene. And then I'm going to remove the scene and don't save it. And now you see we have the player here. <clears throat> so if we play here, it should work. I'm just going to make sure it does. And it does. Now you see we have our player running around here. <clears throat> That's nice. And also, uh, we're going to need this, um, let's see. If we go back to the tutorials where we are in this folder, we're going to also make the VFX visual effects graph. 
minimal system. So I'm actually going to name it the same as the scene and tutorial. I like to do that. And I'm actually going to place it on top of the player <clears throat> because, you know, when you look at the player, whenever you see the bounding box of the VFX, then you render it. So if we always have it on the player, we will always see it. So I don't need to be worried about the VFX effect is too far away from the, I guess it's called Frustum, camera Frustum. So, so it always render. So that's why I'm placing it here on the player. So I'm going to drag it here. It's going to be on the player. And um, also, we're going to have this uh, script. So this script is placed next to the visual effect. And this visual effect game object is, is placed on the player itself here, right? So <clears throat> this um, VFX script, I'm going to open it up and show you. So it's very, let's see, yeah, it's the right one. So there, everything is like... Execute in edit mode. I do that because uh, I want to I wanna have it updating in edit mode. So I don't need to play all the time. And using this Unity engine VFX. So I have the visual effect and transform the player, of course. And in start, I'm just getting the vis cur visual effect. And then I'm just adding the player position here, right? So this is how you pass... Uh, position into the VFX graph. So this name here needs to color, color uh, be the exact same in the VFX graph. So if we open up the VFX graph, um, let's see, it was the wrong one. It's this one we want. So if we open this one, so this is our empty one and we can just first off do this uh, vector free and the names going to be player position. So now this um, values will be populated by this code here. So in order just to make sure everything works, you need to have this player transform into the player transform here. And you see, if we do, yeah, if I move around this one now, now you see this, uh, it's uh, updated here. If I just um, lock this one and move it around, and you see this player position, you see it's updating, and it's updating in the edit mode, just because we have this execute in edit mode, so that's super nice. So we have everything kind of set up, but so now you can uh, either you just using a, a, a use a cube. So you could just um, have um, where are you? Here you are. So this. This um, why is it doing this? This is so weird. Okay, so either you're just using this throughout the tutorial, <clears throat> or you're gonna do a cube like I do. And in Houdini, I'm just gonna save this folder. Well, actually, this file, Houdini file next to the VFX scene that we have in Unity. So it's going to be saved inside the um, Unity folder. So I accept. So now here you can see it's saved here. So this is the file. And the reason is because it's so convenient to organize and have everything at the same place. So we're going to make this cube. So first off, we do a geometry node. And in here, I'm going to make sure I'm done. just going to open this one, right? Okay. So we're going to have a box. The box is our first. Uh, this is what we're going to 
used to make this cool black box that you saw in the beginning. So you see first here I want to do a remesh. And I just want to make sure that we have some um, resolution to work with. Uh, maybe 0 0.01 or maybe, wow, that's too much. Let's do 0 0.05. Yeah, this is, this is a good resolution. And I'm actually going to do this point wop. So <clears throat> you can do a point wop. So the point wop is doing things on the points because you have here, you can see uh, points, edges, primitive, vertices. But I'm going to work on the points, the blue ones here, right? And now I'm going to put a noise on them. So this point wop is like a for loop. It goes through everything that's happened inside this one goes through the points one time. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add a noise. So if you do, let's do, let's see it at the same time. So where are we here? Okay. So if I do an, a this, if I do um, this place, no, this place along normal, and I plug it in here. So what I can do, if I do this now, you see now, <clears throat> I offset the points one unit in the normals direction. So this is what this one does. But what I want to do, I want to control the amount with the noise. So what you see here is like, um, this is the out. So the P stands for position. So it's like displacement is adding. It's kind of, this is a black box thing, right? So the inside hits, it's taking the, position and then it's adding displays on it so and uh, the amount that you want to um, displacement amount you can control it with this amount node here so if we put a noise in here then we can control it so if we do um static unified noise there are a lot of noises you see here is a lot of noises uh, but I like this one. So here you see position. So this node, um, we're going to do noise type, uh, going to be 1D. So it's going to output one, one dimension vector. And that's good because we just want a 0 to 1 value. So we also do need to... Um, give the node a position. So now um, make sure you put it to the right one. So now we see the position here. And um, now here you can scale the strength of it. So you see there is some kind of noise, but it's too um, strong. So what I want to do here, the frequency, I want it to have much higher frequency, like more detail, right? If I'm just crank it up a bit. So now we see we have more uh, noise. So this is nice, but you see the edges is a little bit sharp, you know? So what I want to do here, if I just do this uh, remesh, and then I do smoothing here, you see if I crank it up to one, you see it's kind of a little bit more smooth here. And then if I do the iteration, this is how many times, this up to 10, you see now it's really smooth. So it's, this is of course a little bit heavier to calculate, but it's not a big mesh overall. So now you see the noise is not having these weird edges. And I'm just gonna go into displacement and lower it a little bit. And uh, then you can work with the kind of noise you want. Like, so in this noise, you have some different ones. And if we do a whirly, whirly cellular, you see you have different uh, results and you can check them out and get different ones. It's really nice to play with. So, and also do different 
in uh, frequency. I'm gonna do more noise. So if we use, let's see, hmm. And here we can also do the en enable lattice warp. No, actually, I think it's no uh, terrain, fractal terrain. I like this one because it do a little bit more. And let's create a little bit less. Yeah, you can sit forever and uh, play with this. I'm going to leave it for this uh, right now. So just leave it as it is, but you can just keep on working on it. And actually, if we use a measure curvature, this is the really nice note. You see, it kind of calculates the concave and convex shapes, right? And there are different ways of doing it. So the methods, I'm going to do a volume. So now it's kind of using the volumes to do it. And um, here I can use the sample resolution to get more um, different uh, results and I'm going to use this one and then I'm going to do a poly reduce because we don't need so much resolution and um, yeah I'm going to leave that this this is good enough and uh, also I'm going to here do a smooth, so this smooth, I'm going to take all the points and do it a little bit less edgy. And the reason I want the colors is because I'm going to mask it, because I want a little, little bit differentiate in the smoothing in the shader in Unity. And also I'm going to do auto UV, labs out to UV, so now we have a shading shader on it. And then I'm gonna do a normal, and I'm gonna make sure that the normal is at the top, because I don't want, if you see here, uh, on this triangle here, right? I just want it to be smooth. And <clears throat> then we just do a transform so if we just take the first box and reference it, I see the box is a little bit too big. So I'm just going to take it down a little bit. Um, because I just I find it easier to um, have it more like a one unit. And after this one, I'm going to do a transform again. And this is to compensate between, between Houdini and Unity. So now it's in Unity size, and then we just do a drop FBX output. And this is going to be saving out our mesh. So this is going to be the, let's say, black cube. And I'm actually going to make a null here. And I'm going to do black cube like this black cube mesh because i want the mesh to have this name so i find it easier so if i save this one now like here save to disk and you see it should be here this is our this is our cube so i'm just gonna make a shader <clears throat> the lit shader graph I would need to do it again. It didn't create. So I'm going to have the same name on the shader as the project. So if I open up this shader, what I want to do, I just want to make sure it's kind of have a nice smoothing um, surface. So, um, because we did the name, let's see here. Um, we did black cube mesh. We named it, so it's easy to find. That's good. Here is our cube. And if we just do a vert vertex color and plug it in here, obviously we have the colors. 
But we're only going to use the red channel to um, to work with because I, I want to have <clears throat> more smoothness where it's uh, white and black. So we're actually going to have um, here, we're going to do a color. It is going to be a color that we control like this. I'm just going to wait a little bit with that. So also, if we just do a power node here, now we can control this one here to have it more sharp, right? I'm just going to have it more sharp in the edges like this. And I'm just going to make sure it's between 0 and 1, so it doesn't overshoot the values. So that's why I'm using uh, power uh, sad rate and I'm going to place this one up here. And then I'm just going to do a simple, simple noise. And this noise is going to be multiplied. with this one like this and then I'm just going to do a remap so the value is between 0 and 1 over here so we need the input value is 0 to 1 and now we're just going to change this instead of having to the color I'm going to do to the smoothness and remove it from the base color and the reason is because I want this noise to have, let's do 100. And here on the remap, I'm going to do not zero, but maybe up a little bit. And not one. I don't want it to be fully. Because now you can, uh, let's see if we do 50. And also I'm going to have this color here. So we have black. I want, I just want um, some variation on the reflective values. And I think the power is too much. So I'm going to do maybe four to give it more areas. Okay, so it's not a big effect, but the small details make a, such a huge difference sometimes. So this is how I want to have it. So, but of course, I mean, you could have whatever you want if you want something like this instead. So that's what I want to have. I find it cool and really important. Support VFX graph. You need to plug this one, Dave. So now we have everything set up. So for the next tutorial, we have everything set up and we can start working with the VFX graph. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.